Hello, awesome students! In this video, we are going to learn about mind maps. Mind maps are a way to organize the thoughts and ideas that you've been collecting during your research. They can also help you make choices about information sources to use. In Canva, I will show you how to open up a mind map template and how to start customizing it. Remember, you can pause and rewind this video whenever you need to. Watch it as many times as you'd like. Step one, open up the mind map project in Canva. You can do this by either scanning the QR code through the camera on your device or by typing the web address into the browser bar. Step two, choose a template. Let's go into the Canva project to learn more about this. As you scroll down, you will see that there are seven different mind maps to choose from. They may look different, but they are all made with the same parts. You will need to take a little bit of time to find the mind map that is best for your project. Let's take a look at one of the templates. It has a main idea in the center. Branching off of the main idea, there are five supporting facts. Finally, each supporting fact has three detail branches. Let's zoom in a little closer. Click and drag on the sidebar in the lower right-hand corner to zoom in and out. In order to fill in your template, you will need to change the text. Now you can type in your main idea. When working with informational text, the main idea is who or what the book is about. Hover your mouse over the text you want to change. Once it is surrounded by the purple box, double click to select the text. Type in the new text here. I'm going to make my mind map about Katherine Johnson. By clicking and holding the purple frame, you can drag it to where you want it on your mind map. In the top left corner of the bar, you will see a number. This is the font size. Click the minus button to make your font smaller. You can also click the number to show a drop-down box. Make your font bigger or smaller by clicking on those numbers. The plus button can also be used to make your font bigger. On to supporting facts. In your resources, the supporting facts can come from topic sentences, headers, or from ideas that are repeated. Using our example of Katherine Johnson, some supporting facts can include her childhood, her education, where she worked or her career, her achievements, and the obstacles that she had to overcome. I am selecting and changing the text in each of these boxes the same way I did for the main idea. Details can be filled in the same way as the main idea and supporting facts by changing the text again. This is the good stuff, so go deep on this. Using our example of Katherine Johnson from earlier, we want to tell our audience high interest information. What was her childhood like? Where did she grow up? Where did she go to school? Did she go to high school? College? Who did she work for? What was her job? What was her big achievement? Does she have more than one? What obstacles and challenges did she face along the way? Remember, your mind map is a way for you to organize your information, so it may not be complete at first. By looking at the blank areas, it can tell you where you need to, need to do some more research. Finally, the resources page in Padlet has more templates and printables that you can use along with your mind map. This includes a form to record your resources and which facts you find in them. There's also a link to a file that contains all of the mind map templates. All of the text has been removed from the templates so that you can print out whichever one you want to use and write in your information. Simply find the page number of the template you want to use in the upper left-hand corner of the page. You can then click the printer icon, type in the page number, I'm going to print the second template, and hit print. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end of this video. I hope that you found the information helpful. If you have any questions, you can leave me a comment or send me an email. Happy mind mapping!